Before we calculate oxidation numbers of atoms and compounds, let's first take a look at the periodic table to see the general oxidation numbers of groups of atoms. These are the oxidation numbers that you'll use for the atoms for which we are not calculating oxidation number. Group 1 atoms have a positive 1 charge. Group 2 atoms have a positive 2 charge. Group 3, positive 3. Group 4, positive 4. Group 5 atoms have a negative 3 oxidation number. Group 6, negative 2. And group 7 have a negative 1 oxidation number. We won't really be dealing with the noble gases right now. The transition metals tend to have very low oxidation numbers depending on how many electrons they lose upon forming bonds with atoms and compounds. That's what you have to know before we calculate oxidation numbers. So let's try an example. How about manganese oxide? And suppose we're trying to solve for the oxidation number of one manganese atom in this compound. So what do I do? Well, first of all, notice there is no overall molecular charge. So we're going to start our equation with equal zero. So then we have two manganese atoms. So I'm going to do two times Mn. So I'm going to just use its chemical symbol as the variable because that's what we're solving for. And then notice we have three oxygens. So I'll do plus three times negative two, which is the oxidation number of oxygen that we saw in the periodic table. And that's it. We simply solve for Mn. And so we should get Mn equals positive 3, which is the oxidation number of manganese atom in this compound, hence manganese 3 oxide. So let's try another example. How about hydrogen phosphate? So it looks a little bit different. However, we're going to do it just the same way we did the previous example. Let's suppose we're solving for the oxidation number of the phosphorus atom in this compound. Well, first of all, notice there's an overall molecular charge. So instead of starting our equation with equal zero, we're going to start with equal negative two for the molecular charge. And then everything else we're going to do just the same way as we did before. So we have one hydrogen, so we'll do one times positive one, which is the oxidation number of hydrogen that we saw in the periodic table. We have one phosphorus, so we'll do 1p and use its chemical symbol as its variable because that's what we're solving for. Plus, we have four oxygens, so we'll do 4 times negative 2, which is the oxidation number of oxygen, and that's it. Simply solve for p, and we should get p equals positive 5, which is the oxidation number of the phosphorus atom in this compound, and that's it. Simple as that, even when you have an overall molecular charge. So let's try a little scarier of an example, sodium arsenate. Yes, it looks very different than the previous two examples. However, we're still going to do it the same way we did the previous two examples. So let's suppose we are solving for the oxidation number of the arsenic atom in this compound. Well, first of all, notice there is no overall molecular charge, so we get to start our equation with equal zero again. So then notice we have one arsenic atom, so I'm going to do AS as the variable for arsenic since that's what we're solving for. So then notice we have one, two, three, four oxygens. Remember, you have to distribute the subscript to every atom inside the parentheses. So we have four oxygen atoms, so four times negative two, plus we have two sodium atoms. So we'll do plus 2 times positive 1, which is the oxidation number of sodium that we saw in the periodic table. And then we have 1 hydrogen, so plus 1 times positive 1, and that's it. All you have to do now is solve for arsenic, or AS, and you should get AS equals positive 5, which means the oxidation number of the arsenic atom in sodium arsenate is positive 5. And that's all it is. Simple as that.